The purpose of this video is to uh, solve one of the problems that I've assigned uh, as, a, as a homework question, and let me explain what the problem is. We're looking at transmitting packets of information over a network, and we'll say that uh, each packet is transmitted correctly with no error, with probability P. It fails with the probability Q, which is equal to 1 minus P. Now, if the packet is attempted to transmit and it fails, it is then retransmitted. And if that fails, it is retransmitted. Now, I've already solved the problem of what is the expected number of transmissions before the packet uh, is successfully transmitted and received. And I've computed that probability already as 1 minus p. Now, the purpose of this exercise is to compute the variance of the expected number of transmissions or the standard deviation of that number. Okay, so that's the question I'm trying to solve here. Now, let me explain how I solve it. It uh, you know, a, involves a bit of algebra here, so let's get started. Okay, I'm going to say that the variance, if you remember from your statistics or probability course, that the variance is equal to the expected value of the random variable squared minus the expected value of the random variable quantity squared, like that. So that's how we compute the variance, if you recall. And then the standard deviation is sigma sub x, is the square root of the variance, is the standard deviation. Okay, so uh, now I've already computed this expression right here, expected value of x. Expected value of x is... One over p, and uh, that involved uh, you know some uh, not so obvious issues in uh, finding the values of infinite sums and so on, and uh, we're going to use that result in doing this new result. Okay, now if you remember the definition of expected value of x squared. Okay, so expected value of x squared is going to be equal to the sum n goes from 1 to infinity. So uh, the number of transmissions can go from 1 to infinity. And uh, so we're going to compute this as n squared times the probability that x equals n. So this is how we compute the expected value of x squared. Probably that x equals n multiplied by n squared, we sum over all possible values of n. Now, so if you remember when we were computing the expected value of x, we computed that the probability that uh, x equals n is equal to q to the n minus 1 times p. So the number of transmissions is equal to n if the transmission has failed n minus 1 times. q is the probability of a failure. So we take q to the n minus 1, and then the last transmission is a success, and that has probability p. So this combined expression right here, this right here, is in fact the probability that the number of transmissions is equal to n. Okay, now with that, we want to compute expected value of x squared using the expression above. So we have this, expected value of x squared um, is equal to the sum n goes from 1 to infinity 
of n squared times q to the n minus 1 times p. Okay, and remember that q is equal to 1 minus p. Now I'm going to ask you to recall, because we've used this sum in the calculation for the expected value of x, that the sum going from 0 to infinity of q to the n is equal to 1 over 1 minus q. Okay, that's a, a standard uh, sum formula, and this works provided the value of q, the magnitude of q, is less than 1. Now, using this expression, we computed this result, that the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of n q to the n minus 1 is equal to 1 over 1 minus q squared. Now, remember, we did that computation. If you remember how we did it, what we did was we did the derivative of both sides of this expression right here. The derivative of both sides of that expression. So d d q is equal to d d q of this. And then when we did that, the derivative of the sum gave us this, and the derivative of 1 over 1 minus q gave us that. So that's how we did that computation. It's not hard to do. Okay, now notice that the sum here, we start this sum at 1, where this sum starts at 0. Why is that the case? Well, we could start this sum at 0 if we want. No problem. We get exactly the same answer because when n equals 0, this term right here is 0. So we just start the sum at 1 to get rid of that first 0 term. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to take this expression here, this one right here, and this expression, and take the derivative of both sides of that. So what am I doing here? So let's look at this. So we have, I want to do the sum. n goes from 1 to infinity of n times q to the n minus 1. And I say that equals to 1 over 1 minus q squared. Now I'm going to take the derivative with respect to q of both sides, like this. OK, when I do that, uh, the left hand sum becomes the sum n goes from 1 to infinity. Take the derivative of this with respect to q, I get n times n minus 1 times q to the n minus 2. And on the right-hand side, I uh, take the derivative of 1 over 1 minus q squared. Now I treat 1 over 1 minus q squared, I treat this thing right here as being 1 minus q to the negative 2, and just simply use the power rule. So if I do that, using the power rule, I get the, this derivative right here then becomes 2 over 1 minus q cubed. So this is, uh, now this gives me this expression. Now notice I have n minus 1. When n is equal to 1, the n minus 1 term is 0. So I just drop that term because it's 0, and I can start the sum at 2, so I can go n equals 2 to infinity if I decide n goes from n minus 1, q to the n minus 2, and this is equal to 2 over 1 minus q cubed. Now notice, actually, I could also start this sum at n equals 0, and I should get the same result because when n equals 0, that term is 0. So the n equals 0 term and the n equal 1 term 
are both zero. So that's why I started at n equal two. Okay, now, now, I'm going to multiply this expression out. So when I do that, I have this slight rearrangement. Let me write, I have the sum. n goes from 2 to infinity of n squared q to the n minus 2 minus the sum. n goes from 2 to infinity of n q to the n minus 2. And that all is going to equal 2 divided by 1 minus q cubed. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm actually trying to compute the sum of n squared q to the n minus 1. And, I, and why am I trying to compute that? If you look back up here, right here, this thing, I can bring the p right outside the sum like that because it's independent of n. I can rewrite this whole thing as p times the sum. n goes from 1 to infinity of n squared q to the n minus 1. So I need to compute this expression right here in order to compute the expected value of x squared. So this is what I'm trying to do here. So let me go back down here. What I have is instead of being n squared q to the n minus 1, I have n squared q to the n minus 2. Well, I could um, uh, uh, use that if I can figure out how to get that n minus 2 in there. Now, this is almost the same as the expected value of the random variable, right? So here's, uh, let me write this out. I have the expected value of x is equal to the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of n q to the n minus 1. So I can, that's what that expected value is, almost the same as that sum above. And then I have expected value of x squared is equal to the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of n squared q to the n minus 1. So these two expressions up here are almost, but not quite, exactly what I want. So I need to turn them into what I want. Okay, let's look at this term right here. Let's look at this term right here. That one, that sum. Okay, so let me let me do a little aside here. Okay, aside, there we go. So I want to look at the sum. N goes from 2 to infinity of N times Q to the n minus 2. Well, one thing I notice is I want n to go from 1 to infinity and not 2 to infinity. So I could write this as being the sum n goes from 1 to infinity n q to the n minus 2, but then I have to subtract off this extra term here that I've just added in. The extra term is the n equal 1 term. So the n equal 1 term here is going to be q to the negative 1. Um, and, uh, or, let me, uh, okay, so q to the negative 1, I want to subtract that off, so I subtract off q to the negative 1, which is 1 over q like that. Okay, that, that uh, now what else? I want to start this sum um, at 2, or, um, I mean, I'm sorry here, let me, uh, let me see here. Okay, this is the, this is 
two goes here. You know what the heck here? Okay, here. Uh, grief, grief, there we go. So this is starting at n equal 2. This is starting at n equal 1, but I've subtracted off the n equal 1 term. Okay, now I have the... Um, I don't want n minus 2 here. I want n minus 1. So to get n minus 1 there, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say this equals... I'm going to factor out 1 over q. So I have 1 over q. Factor out 1 of the 1 over q's. Now I can... Um, write this as q to the n minus 1. Uh, so I have n equals 1 to infinity and q to the n minus 1 minus 1 over q. Okay, now one more step. I'm going to factor out the 1 over q. So I get 1, factor out 1 over q. So I have 1 over q times the sum n goes from 1 to infinity of n q to the n minus 1 and then minus 1 since I factored out the 1 over q. Okay, now this, as I mentioned before, this term right here is just the expected value of x. Let me come back up here. Okay, expected value of x right here. Okay, so I have um, the expression for the expected value of x, and I did this in a previous video, and and I, where I computed that sum, the expected value of x is 1 over p. So I can take this term right here, okay, and um, I can uh, I can say well. Uh, I can, this is, this is what I was doing in the expected value of x. Now, I actually evaluated this sum here. I evaluated it, and when I evaluated, I found that that sum is equal to, let me come back here to red, so I have 1 over q, and that sum I previously computed to be 1 over 1 minus q squared. Okay, and I did that again by doing derivatives of sums and so on. So I have 1 over q is equal to this minus that, and now I can put this over a common denominator, put that as, write that as, in turn, uh, uh, as an expression with this denominator, and then simplify it. So let me do that. This is going to equal 1 over q times 1 over 1 minus q squared minus 1 minus q squared over 1 minus q squared like that, OK? Now, with them over a common denominator, I can combine those terms, and I can simplify them. So let me combine the terms. I get 1 over q, and then I get, if I multiply this out, okay, so multiply that out, put everything over a common denominator, I get 1 minus 1 plus 2q minus q squared all over 1 minus q squared. I have that. Okay, and the way it always goes, if you remember, is expressions first get more complicated before they get more simple. And now I simplify this out, and I get um, this is equal to 1 over q. And then right here, 
notice that the 1 minus 1 goes like that. And then I have 2q minus q squared there. And I can take that 2q minus 2q squared and write it as q times 2 minus q all over 1 minus q squared in the denominator there. And then the q's cancel here and here. So I get this is equal to 2 minus q over 1 minus q squared. Okay, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of algebra I had to go through to get uh, this thing. If you remember, I was computing the sum. n goes from 2 to infinity of n q to the n minus 2. So that's what I got right there for that thing. OK, now let's hold this in our box or come back and use it. OK, now the next thing I need to do is I need to compute the other sum. So let me draw a line here. Let me go back to white, separate them. So I need to compute this, the sum n goes from 2 to infinity of n squared q to the n minus 2. And this is equal to 2 over 1 minus q cubed plus 2 minus q over 1 minus q squared. Okay, where is this all coming from now? Well, this gives me this down here. And this is coming from way up here. It's coming from this expression right in here. So I have this minus this is equal to that. So if I take this term right here, and now I take this term and add it over to the other side of the equation. If I do that, that gives me this expression right in here. OK, now sum n goes from 2 to infinity of n squared q to the n minus 2. So let me do some algebra here on the right hand side. This whole thing is going to equal to let me factor out a 1 over 1 minus q cubed. 1 over 1 minus q cubed. So I factor that out. And here I just have 2. Now this is 1, 1 minus q squared. So I have to multiply 2 minus q by 1 minus q. But in other words, I do this. I get plus 2 minus q times 1 minus q like that. OK, now multiply this out and simplify. So let me do this. I get equals 1 over 1 minus q cubed. And then I have 2 plus 2 minus 3q plus q squared when I multiply this out. And then I simplify. And I get this is equal to 1, one over 1 minus q cubed. And this becomes q squared minus 3q plus 4. OK. So. Now, I want to use this now in the computation expression for expected value of x squared. Now, if you look up above, the expected value for x squared is given by this. So expected value of x squared is 
is equal to P times the sum N goes from 1 to infinity of N squared Q to the N minus 1. That's what I have from way, way up here. Expected value of X squared right here, right there. Okay, now. I can rewrite this. Let me factor a Q out of this here. So I rewrite this, and what do I get? I get PQ. This is equal to PQ times the sum. N goes from 1 to infinity of N squared Q to the N minus 2, because I factored out 1Q. Now this sum... is indeed right in here. This sum is what I just computed right here. Okay, so now with that, I can rewrite this, this thing in the following fashion. I can say expected value of x squared is equal to PQ times the sum N goes from 2 to infinity of N squared Q to the N minus 2 plus 1 over Q. Where is that coming from? Remember the 1 over Q term I had? Oh, way, way, way right here. Right in there. Remember that? And then I continued to simplify that down. So this is why I did all of that. So I have this. Now, I have PQ times 1 over Q. The Q's cancel. So how does this simplify? This becomes PQ times the sum. N goes from 2 to infinity of N squared Q to the n minus 2, and then when I multiply pq times 1 over q, I get plus p. So that becomes that. This sum I've just computed. Okay, so let me put in, that's right up here, right there, and it's equal to that. So I now have this as my expression. I have Expected value of x squared is pq times q squared minus 3q. I'm going to let me double check that plus 4 over 1 minus q cubed plus P. So let me check this. Is that a 3Q or 2Q? It's 3Q right here. See that? 3Q. Okay. Now, I can put everything over a common denominator. Okay, I've done this before. And um, I have, okay, this bracket shouldn't be there. This bracket should be here. So let me erase that bracket. Okay, there. So this is the expression, uh, correcting that error. Now I can factor out a Q. So I get this is equal to P Q P times, let me write it like this, P times. Now, 
I'm going to multiply the Q right in here times that. Okay, so if I do that, I get Q cubed, Q cubed minus 3Q squared plus 4Q, all divided by 1 minus Q cubed um, plus, now this thing, I factored out a P here. If I factor out a P, then I have a 1 there. So this now moves down as a 1. And 1 is 1 minus Q cubed over 1 minus Q cubed. Okay, having factored out the P right here. Now I have everything over a common denominator, which is... Uh, as you learn in uh, when you're first doing Algebra 1 and then Algebra 2, common denominators are, are, are king. You need to always put things over common denominators. Okay, so with that, then I uh, combine all my terms. Um, so I, multi I can multiply this out. And... Um, so, and I have 1 minus Q cubed in the denominator. So, let me just, just simplify that as much as I can. Um, so, I get P times. So, I have Q cubed minus 3Q squared plus 4Q. Now I add plus 1. Um, I multiply this out. Okay. And uh, 1 minus Q cubed. Here, let me, before, let me erase this here. Come on. Okay, here. Let me first multiply that out so you see what it is. 1 minus Q cubed. When I multiply this out, I get this. 1 minus Q Cubed. So in order to do that, I have to first do 1 minus Q squared and then multiply by 1 minus Q. So I get 1 minus 2Q plus Q squared times 1 minus Q. Okay, now keep multiplying here and then this becomes... One minus two q plus q squared. That's multiplying by the one minus q plus two q squared minus q cubed, multiplying by the negative q. And then I simplify terms. I get one minus three q plus three q squared minus q cubed. Wow. Okay, so now I go up above here, and I have that, uh, I have this expression now. I want to rewrite this expression. So let me do that. So this expression now can simplify. So I have P times, now I take this and add it to that right there. So this plus that, because they're over a common denominator. And I get P times Q plus 1 all over 1 minus Q cubed. Just like that. So what's going on? Notice I get Q cubed minus Q cubed. That goes. I have minus 3Q squared plus 3Q squared. That goes. 
So this goes with that. This goes with that. I have 4Q and minus 3Q. That gives me this Q right here. And then I have the plus 1, which gives me that. Okay, so that's what I get. And don't let me forget here. Uh, I want to uh, plug this in now for the expression for the variance. So this is the expression for expected value of x squared. So now I plug in for the variance, which so this means that the variance of x is going to equal this thing, which is p times q plus 1, all divided by 1 minus q cubed. And now I subtract off the first, the first moment squared, or the expected value squared. So I subtract off 1 over p squared. Now, uh, this isn't quite in, in uh, lowest form. Uh, I can use the fact that 1 minus q is equal to p here. So I can use the fact that 1 minus q is equal to p. I have that. And q is equal to 1 minus p. So q plus 1 equals 1 minus p plus 1, which equals 2 minus p. So I have this is equal to, come down here, sigma x squared is equal to p times 2 minus p all over p cubed minus 1 over p squared. p cancels there. So this is 2 minus p over p squared minus 1 over p squared. So this simplifies finally to 1 minus p over p squared, which I could write as q over p squared if I so choose. So this is the variance. So to find the standard deviation, I take the square root of both sides, and I get this. Sigma sub x is equal to the square root of q over p. So this is the answer. Now, um, in the... Uh, in the homework uh, text, I think I computed the value of p um, to be something like uh, p is equal to 0 0.107. And uh, therefore, uh, you can plug that in there. And if you do that, unless I made a mistake, which is quite probable, I get sigma sub x is equal to 8. 0.83 is the standard deviation of x, which is x is the random variable that represents the number of transmissions I have to make on the packet in order for the packet to re be received correctly. So that's it. Okay, that's a long, long um, problem.